I remember that day vividly, like it happened just yesterday. It was a weekday afternoon during the fall season. The leaves had started to turn shades of orange and red, and the outdoor temperature was slightly chilly. My best friend, who we will call Catherine and I had been friends since elementary school. We were just 15 years old, carefree, and full of life. We were practically inseparable, always getting into mischief together. That day, after school, we decided to treat ourselves to some ice cream. I would have never imagined that day would haunt me for years to come. We walked down the familiar streets, laughing and chatting about anything and everything. As we arrived at our favorite ice cream parlor, we entered with excitement. The place was busy, mostly with other children in our age group. We waited in line for about five minutes and then we made our choices. It was the perfect way to end a long day of classes. As we sat at a small table near the window, Catherine suddenly excused herself to use the restroom. I didn't think much of it at the time, it was a routine thing, after all. I continued enjoying my ice cream, staring out the window absentmindedly. Minutes turned into 20, and Catherine still hadn't returned. Concerns started to creep into my mind, and I couldn't shake off a feeling of unease. It was unlike Catherine to disappear for so long without a word. I decided to go check on her, hoping to find her laughing at some silly graffiti or lost in a magazine. I pushed open the door to the restroom, my heart pounding in my chest. But the scene that greeted me was nothing short of chilling. The bathroom was empty, except for Catherine's backpack and her left sneaker on the floor. I began to panic as I called out her name, but the bathroom was dead silent. I rushed back to our table, frantic and desperate for answers. Maybe someone had seen something, maybe they knew where she had gone. But as I scanned the busy parlor, faces blurred into a sea of strangers. No one had noticed anything unusual. It was as if Catherine had vanished into thin air. The police were called, and an investigation began. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and months into years, but there was no trace of Catherine. Her disappearance remained a mystery, leaving our small community in shock and disbelief. Rumors spread like wildfire, speculating about what might have happened to her. But amidst the chaos, I held on to hope. I refused to believe that Catherine was gone forever. Every year, on her birthday, I made it a point to call her mother. We would reminisce about our adventures, our shared laughter, and our dreams for the future. It was my way of keeping Catherine alive, even if only in memories. Years passed, and life moved on, but the shadow of Catherine's disappearance lingered. I couldn't help but feel guilty, wondering if I could have done something differently that day. The what-ifs haunted me, eating at my soul. I was carrying the weight of her disappearance with me for years. That's when I decided to hire a private investigator to investigate Catherine's disappearance. Her mother had been apprehensive at first, but reluctantly agreed to it after convincing her that this could bring her some closure. Finally, she gave me her blessing. We worked with the investigator for several weeks before he called us with some new information in the case. Like many of the other customers at the parlor on the day Catherine disappeared, there was a classmate of ours who had been interviewed at the scene. At the time, he told the police he hadn't seen anything out of the ordinary. However, when the investigator questioned him many years later, he admitted that he knew what happened to Catherine. He said that he saw Catherine being dragged into a red pickup truck and that he knew who drove the truck that day. When he revealed who Catherine's abductor was, my heart sank. He revealed that the man who took Catherine was his older brother. But that wasn't all. 
he also told the investigator where Catherine was buried. While the investigator was updating us, there was a team of officers actively on the scene working to find any of evidence of Catherine. Out of respect for Catherine's family, I won't give any of the very haunting details, but let's just say what happened to Catherine was very disturbing. The man who had abducted her and ultimately harmed her was the older brother of one of our classmates. He had even offered us rides home from the football games before. I would have never thought he could something like this especially because at the time that we found out he had done this to Catherine, he was a married man with three children and a youth pastor at our local church. He is the last person anyone would have expected to harm someone in such a brutal way. This is the same man who had prayed with Catherine's family shook her mother's hand on Sundays. Our classmate said that he was happy when the investigator reached out to him because he had been feeling guilty all those years. We were able to give my dear friend a proper burial after all. I remember the day the missing person's case landed on my desk. I opened the file and saw the photograph of a young woman who looked like she was about the same age as my sister. She was young and seemed to be a young woman filled with potential which made me more motivated to find out what happened to her. We will call the missing woman Angela, and she had vanished without a trace just a few weeks before I was assigned to the case. As an experienced detective, I had investigated my fair share of missing person cases. But there was something about Angela's disappearance that bothered me. Maybe it was the way her family pleaded for answers, their desperate voices never left my mind. Or maybe it was the sense of urgency that surrounded the investigation. Either way, I was dedicated to finding Angela. Months into the investigation, and the case remained cold. My partner, who we will call Detective Mark, and I combed through witness statements, interviewed friends and family, and chased down leads. But the truth slipped away from us, leaving behind a trail of frustration and unease. Mark had suggested that we focus on cases that were more important, but I wasn't prepared to give up just yet. One night, I was working at the precinct late. Mark had called it a night and had gone home. As I looked over the case files, a name caught my eye, Mark Williams. My partner, my trusted colleague for over three years, had become a person of interest in Angela's disappearance. The evidence pointed to his involvement, sending shockwaves through my soul. At first I didn't want to accept what was in front of me and I looked over the evidence multiple times to double check what I knew deep down was true. Dread settled in the pit of my stomach as I sifted through the damning evidence. The phone records, surveillance footage, and witness testimonies all painted a chilling picture, a picture that pointed directly at the person I had trusted with my life. I knew I had to confront the truth head on to separate my personal feelings from the demands of my duty. But the thought of reporting Mark to our superior filled me with fear. How could I face the consequences of exposing someone I had worked so closely with, someone I had considered a friend? The weight of the knowledge grew heavier with each passing day. The dark cloud of doubt loomed over my every move, threatening to suffocate me. But I couldn't turn a blind eye. Angela's family deserved answers, justice, and closure. Summoning every ounce of courage, I arranged a meeting with our superior, who we will call Captain Anderson. My heart raced as I entered his office, the weight of my decision pressing on my shoulders. I laid out the evidence before him, watching as the truth took hold of his expression. Captain Anderson listened intently, his face a mask of concern and disbelief. He assured me that a thorough investigation would be conducted, with no biases or exceptions. But despite his reassurances, a sense of unease lingered. The repercussions of my actions loomed over me like a dark shadow. Days turned into weeks once again, but this time the focus of the investigation had shifted. I watched as the evidence mounted against Mark, his once stellar reputation crumbling under the weight of suspicion. The precinct buzzed with whispers and rumors, a toxic mix of fear and uncertainty. During those tense days, I became the target of both sympathy and suspicion. Some doubted my motives, questioning why I had waited so long to report my partner. 
others commended my courage, acknowledging the difficulty of my position. But their words did little to ease the turmoil brewing within me. The day Mark was taken into custody remains in my memory, that day was filled with betrayal and shattered trust. I had a mix of emotions seeing my good friend in handcuffs clicked around his wrists and knowing that I was the reason for it. We looked at each other and he looked to be filled with a mix of anger and confusion. Our partnership was once strong and unbreakable but had quickly crumbled. That day, every officer I worked with looked like a suspect. I didn't trust anyone, and the entire situation started to affect my mental health. A few weeks later, my 22-year career in law enforcement ended. I'll never forget that night, driving down the streets with my brother on the passenger side. We just left the club and were heading home. Before we left the club that night, my brother had gotten into it with a couple of guys. After calming the situation down, I was able to convince my brother to leave. We were traveling on a dark road that didn't have street lights and as I looked in my rearview mirror, I could see red and blue lights flashed behind us. I got nervous and my heart was pounding in my chest. I pulled the car to the side and woke up my brother who was sleeping. I pulled my car to the side and turned on the lights in the car so the officer could see us clearly. I was surprised that the police officer never spoke to me at all. He focused his attention on my brother. He demanded my brother's ID, and I watched as my brother handed it over. The officer scanned my brother's ID and I could see his eyes get big as he was reading the information. In a split second, he started barking orders, yanking my brother out of the car and cuffing him. Out of nowhere another officer walks up to the driver's side and tells me to stay in the car. I asked them what was going on and the officer who was on my side of the car told me that my brother had a warrant. My brother had a few run-ins with the law before, but he had turned his life around and I was surprised that he had a warrant. I asked the officer what the warrant was for, but he told me that he would not discuss that with me and ordered me to leave the scene. They forced my brother into their car and I stood there, helpless and confused. I drove home and kept the encounter hidden from my mother who was asking where my brother was. I told her that he would be home soon because I didn't want to worry her. That night, I barely got any sleep. I waited by the phone for my brother to call me from jail, but he never did. The next morning, I decided to tell my mother and she waited by her phone too just in case he called her. By the afternoon, our family grew increasingly worried. We called the jail, demanding answers, but they claimed they had no record of my brother being in custody. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. After a week of no answers, we involved our other relatives who worked in law enforcement, but even they couldn't figure out what happened to him. Every path we went down led us to dead ends. How could someone disappear like that? How could the system fail us so brutally? We filed a missing persons report and then, the unimaginable happened. A report came in, a body had been found floating in a nearby creek. My heart dropped to the pit of my stomach and my knees weakened beneath me. I knew, deep down, that it was him. My mother was called to identify the body and we stood at the edge of the bed my brother laid on. There were no answers, no explanations. Just a lifeless body, stolen from us too soon. The system had failed us, shattering, and made us lose trust in the very people sworn to protect and serve. We became determined to find the truth, to figure out what had claimed my brother's life. We started our own investigation, digging through his past, connecting the dots, and unraveling every web. It was a dangerous path we walked, treading on thin ice as we ventured into the underbelly of the city. Whispers in the streets led us to murky characters, crooked cops, ruthless gangs, and a web of corruption that reached far beyond our imagination. My brother's name had been entangled in a dangerous game, 
a game that had cost him his life. We discovered that he had unknowingly become entangled in a web of deceit. The warrant he had been arrested on was a fabrication, a ploy to silence him, to erase him from existence. The truth he had stumbled upon had made him a target. As we put the pieces of his last days together, many people reached out to help, journalists, activists, and individuals who refused to let his death be forgotten. Together, we fought for justice, for the truth to be brought to light. Our family was threatened, intimidated, and we faced obstacles at every turn. The very people we trusted had become enemies, trying to silence our voices. But we stood tall, channeling his spirit, and demanding the truth be heard. And then, a breakthrough, a whistleblower stepped forward, revealing the dark secrets that had led to my brother's demise. The truth spilled out, revealing the corruption and cover-ups that stained the city. The perpetrators were exposed, their crimes laid bare for all to see. The guilty were brought to justice, held accountable for the loss of my brother's life. It was a bittersweet victory, one that would never fill the void his absence had left behind. Our journey was far from over, but we remained determined. We would not let his death be in vain. The streets may be unforgiving, but they would not silence our voices. We would continue to seek justice, to expose the darkness that lurked beneath the surface, and to ensure that no more lives would be lost in the name of corruption.